Christmas, every year, batches of eager and terrified 18-year-olds move to high school level, move from high school edu level education to that of college. Michael Kiernley from Honolulu, Hawaii, holds the Guinness World Record for being the youngest college graduate ever enrolled in college at the age of eight. He graduated with his bachelor's degree at 10 and his master's at 14. How is that <laughs> even possible? Let's find out as we speak to our magnificent and exceptional individual. Please welcome to our very, <laughs> please welcome to our very own Kittish and Genius. Yes, you're a kitchen genius. <laughs> Malia Erickson, welcome. Welcome. Hi, <laughs> I know you're a little nervous. You're you're good now. Yeah. I mean, you're you're you're. Settled, yes, yes. You're a genius. So you you got this. You got this. <laughs> so tell us. I mean, has it been intimidating? You're 14 years old, and you're already enrolled in the Clarence Fitzroy Bryan College. Like when I went when I was 17, I was totally unprepared, terrified. How are you feeling? Well, entering into CFBC, I felt I did. I was very excited, you know, mm -hmm. and I wasn't worried about making friends or having people to relate to because I've already been associated with a lot of the older kids from mm -hmm. when I was in first and second form. Because as I did my subjects outside of school, I would have also had to attend the classes with them. Mm -hmm. So I kind of familiarized myself with that. Yeah, those <laughs> age groups, yeah. right, right, right. Mom, I have to ask, when did you see the signs that she was going to be so advanced? Baby genius, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's probably at a very tender age, like when she was a baby. Like, um, you know how they would have this um, go chat on the clinic card? Like, I would realize that she would do everything way advanced of time. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're supposed to, like, balance your head from, like, um, six months or so. She was balancing way before then, maybe at six weeks. <laughs> oh. I never really, I, I thought it was special, and um, I never really picked up on it until she got to kindergarten. And I asked her teacher, I said, um, how is Malia at school? And the teacher mentioned, okay, she, Malia, she's kind of lightheaded. But I didn't know what the expression mean. Mm. So I thought lightheaded means, well, you know, you can't hold nothing in your head. <laughs> I was kind of concerned, right? But then she graduated from preschool as most outstanding student. And then what even concreted more was when she got to kindergarten, when everybody was learning how to count numbers from 1 to 20 at kindergarten mm. stage. She was already multiplying and dividing from oh kindergarten stage. So. Whoa! <laughs> so at that point, I realized that, uh, you know, she is gifted. And she always had the, the drive. It continued throughout high school, throughout primary school, and throughout high school. So, wow, yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Multi I, I still struggle with multiplying and dividing. So yeah, I mean, that says a lot. So tell us, what are you studying in um, CFBC? At CFBC, my main course is natural sciences, and my elective is computer science. Mm -hmm. We can talk. <laughs> <laughs> I love those courses. <laughs> So how do you keep so grounded? Interacting with you, I, I sense that humility. And for someone to be so young and so down to earth, how do you stay grounded? Does mom help with that? <laughs> I actually don't go to my mom for a lot of things because I like to figure things out by myself. I feel like I gain a sense of accomplishment when I do something without asking for help. And I feel like that also, that could also be I don't fall in somewhere because I find it hard to go and ask for help and go ask some questions. Yeah. Right, so I mean, you as the mom, so we asked her how she keeps grounded. So you, how, I mean, you have a 14 year old who's in CFBC with 17 year old, 18 years old, mm -hmm. old. Are you nervous? Are you anxious? Are you scared? How do you support her in that? Yeah. I mean, she, um, she is a responsible individual. and She's very assertive, very mm -hmm. organized. She organized everything to the T. She plans out her day, right? I get a bit nervous sometimes when uh, they have these late night classes because mm. she's still 14 years old. So sometimes she's up the college, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, and I get concerned because I'm not there to see what's going on. But she manages very well. And you know, constant reinforcement um, as what is expected of her. Mm -hmm. um, we are a Christian family. So, you know, she's grounded in the word of God. And um, I just try to give her support where necessary. 
But um, I'm not really worried because, like I said, I've raised her well, and mm -hmm. she carries herself well. She knows what is expected, and so I'm not, um, in terms of keeping her grounded, there is an unspoken, what you call it, rules around our house. You, you know how you car you're supposed to carry yourself. You know what crowd you're supposed to be among. She knows what is expected, mm -hmm. right? And because of the type of individual she is, I'm not really worried. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so your choices, back to your natural sciences and computer science, uh, where do you see yourself in and I'm not going to age you at all. I'm going to say 10 years because of the weight that you were going no, it's and thinking light speed. Yeah, it's going to be so, like two. <laughs> in the future, where do you see yourself? I'm, my interest in science, science has led me to decide that I would like to be a pediatrician. Oh. But I've heard many stories from doctors who said that although they love the science, you know, they chose their career and they're not as happy with it. So I always told my parents that if being a pediatrician didn't work out for me, I would always fall back on being a web developer because I love IT. Those are, those are really two different things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the crowd goes along with you, but they're all waiting for you. So yeah, that's super exciting. Again, two varying things. Pediatrician, mm -hmm. much different from like an IT tech, right? Mm -hmm. But that's super interesting. I mean, with your brain, you can, you definitely have the skill to, to do both things. Um, how was it for you? I'm going to ask you and I'm going to ask your mom. How was it when you were preparing for your exams? Like, I know it's normally like a nerve-wracking situation, terrified, up late night studying. Is it the same for you? Or because you're a genius, you just <laughs> touch it, <laughs> look it done, got it. Um, in my, when I did my first five exams, they, I wasn't as nervous because I felt like those were easy subjects to tackle. But then... Easy such as? Um, HSB, English... IT, EDPM, and maths, right? So maths was e e <laughs> easy, easy subjects. Yeah, maths, yeah, IT, easy. But when it came to the last four I did, which was chemistry, biology, physics, and additional maths, I was a bit more worried because not only was I doing the subjects outside of school, I was also doing them in school. So then studying, you would think that they would come hand in hand, but because of the level of CSEC that I was doing and the ones that I was doing in school, it was very contrasting. So it was like, I'm studying this, but I'm already way ahead of it. So I had to learn to develop certain skills that helped me and I had to learn to motivate myself because, I don't know, I don't know. It was, it was yeah. challenging, yeah. but I mean, you succeeded. Yeah. You're also 14. So, <laughs> <laughs> and for you, how was it when she was doing all these exams at such a young age? Yeah, well, she started writing um, CX. CXC at age 12, she did maths and EDPM then, and I was very much nervous for her. I was a math tutor, and um, her EDPM classes was clashing with one of the maths, the days for maths. So she, she was attending one out of two sessions every week. So I was a bit nervous, right? But along the way, I can't say I was of great help to her, because she would only come to me when she don't understand something. Right. She normally would study off her own. So if you bump on a question that is challenging, she'll come and she asks me to explain and she picks up things very easily. She catch on very easily. Mm -hmm. right? So I was nervous all the way to <laughs> the time when exam result was going to come out. I remember I was at AVEC. I was um, on the curriculum writing team. And we were there waiting for the time to reach to just open. And I, I remember <laughs> the, the scream. I, you know, I just shouted, like, wow! I was so excited, right? Mm -hmm. So after she handled those first two very well, mm -hmm. then I felt a bit more relaxed. And I, you know, um, I allowed her to, you know, um, choose the amount of subjects that you want to do. Mm -hmm. I guess I was there for guidance and for financial support. In terms of course. Of course. <laughs> but of course. she did most of she. It was mainly her. <laughs> have to give her the credit. All right. Yeah. Well, we give you the credit for, you know, birthing a genius. Absolutely. It must have come from somewhere. And raising her Why? knowledge exactly. and, you know, the talent that you saw. I have to say, you're such an inspiration as a parent, and you're such an inspiration as a student who does not set limits on yourself. That's a very good message for all of us. Uh, in our last few moments, is there anything that you want to say to other students like you in terms of what they can achieve? Well... I, I, like, I like to say that what I did, it, I wouldn't say that it's nothing special, 
But if you really put your mind to it, everyone can achieve the same things that I did. They may not be able to do it at the pace at which I did it or at the age at which I did it, but you can achieve anything that you put your mind to. Thank <laughs> you.